we're here at the Outdoor Retailer Show at the Outdoor Research booth yeah. with uh, one of uh, the Mountain Adventure Festival ambassadors and outdoor research athlete, Hans Florian. How are you? I'm doing great. It's fun to be here. First day, first morning of the show for me. Is it still exciting after all these years? Oh, yeah. I mean, you see maybe a couple more wrinkles on people's faces and stuff over the years because I've been coming 30 years to this thing. Um, but you're just always kind of anxious to see, hear about what you know adventure someone had been on the last year or the, maybe it's four years since you've seen them so it's always cool to kind of touch base back with the community and see what, what they've been doing. Well and not only that with the evolution in, in gear and technology but I, I've been watching you climb for 20 years starting first on TV like with the X Games where you were flying up the 90 foot wall in 10 seconds or less probably less right to then speed walls you know what's been the evolution and why speed? Um, I've always told people like speed because I'm good at it. Um, you know, people used to kind of laugh at speed at competitions in the U.S. and Europe, but like they gave me a rope for winning, and then they gave me 500 Deutschmarks, and then they gave me a couple million lira, and I'm like, why wouldn't you do this? Because it kept me on the road climbing. Mm -hmm. So um, I just was good at it, and they rewarded me for it. And then I found like this was a great way to get a lot of climbing in in a day. Sometimes it was sport climbing, like hey, we can go do 12 routes in five hours before we got to be at you know such and such party. So um, I just found it's a great way to do more of what I love. That's great. And then you actually took that not only to the big walls, but then you've also done some huge link ups like in the Sierras with big traverses and lots of 14ers. Yeah, um, it's. I kind of say that I'm not the M word, the mountaineer. I'm more the t-shirt and shorts climber. And uh, but I have gone and dabbled, and it's pretty fun to go out in the Sierras and link together Palisades Traverse with you know Split Mountain, and then walk along the John Muir Trail and go down to Whitney and stuff. So that backcountry st stuff is that added extra little adventure. So. Well, at that speed, it's not really mountaineering. It's more like going rock climbing with a long approach. Exactly. Yeah. You know, and we always joke like, oh, that's going to get your legs big for sport climbing. So don't do any of that hiking stuff. But um, I haven't had a problem yet. Now, what, what about sp speaking of that in terms of like, you know, developing legs, how do you train for the speed? And what's the difference between training for like speed for like an El Cap or like a gym wall or yeah. like a big evolution traverse? Well, like speed climb for the X Games is, like you said, 9 to 15 seconds, right? And that's basically a sprint across the half side of a pool. And that's what I'll often do is I'll go in a pool and I'll swim as fast as I can sprint for 10 seconds. Um, because basically it's tough to get someone to belay you in a gym, you know, 10 <laughs> seconds over and over and over again. But um, that's what you would do for the X Games. But whereas, you know, El Cap, you can't find El Cap in the city, so you've got to do laps in the gym. And you know, y'all go, oh, let's try to do 50 laps times 30 feet. That's uh, 1,500 feet. So, again, you need to have a patient belay partner if you're going to do that sort of stuff. But that's basically mileage of climbing is what I do for El Cap training. Okay, and, and then do you do like a lot of cardio, or you know, after years and years of descending El Cap hundreds of times, how are your knees? <laughs> My knees are great given what I, the mileage I put on them. Mm -hmm. um, my wife kind of jokes like, Hans, you need to save your knees for going hiking with the kids and stuff later on. And um, it's tough to like put off when you get asked to go to like, I don't know, uh, Papua New Guinea or something and climb Karsten's Pyramid. Like, I'm not going to say no to preserve my knees. for. I want to go on that adventure, you know. So I've said yes to all the kind of bigger adventures I've gone on here and there. And um, my knees are sore, um, but... I'm lucky my knees hurt when I go adventure, and when I'm done adventure and they stop hurting, so like, it's worth it to me. Like, ah, my knees hurt while I'm hiking. I don't care, I'm getting to hike. Well, and with modern technology, you can trade them in for a new pair soon. Yeah, I'm thinking technology gets better every year, so when it gets to the point where I can't hike, then I'll go in and see the, the shop mechanic, basically. Yeah, exactly. It's like, you know, it's like, I, I think I need a new neck too, but that one's a little bit harder. <laughs> From all that blame, yeah. I yeah, think it's, I think my mine traces back to other other things I did, yeah. but yeah. Um, do you like in terms of training though? Like, do you do any weights? Do, you know, what other like swimming is obviously a big thing. What other cross training or gym? So training this is a doing? great question. Um, as I've gotten, I mean, when you're younger, you can kind of do anything and get away with everything. Like climbing is the best training for climbing, but I've been managing a climbing gym out in the East Bay, uh, Diablo Rock Gym. And they have CrossFit, they have yoga, they have cycling, they have, you know, TRX and everything. And I've kind of started learning, like, just jump into a class with somebody, whether it's, you know, body sculpting or TRX or CrossFit. And, like, they're going to have you do some movement that you never did before. And that's what kind of climbers think, like, you use your whole body to climb, like your head, your toe, your thing. You do, but you're not using it the same way as in TRX or in CrossFit. And 
when you go do those things, like you have muscles that are sore that weren't sore before, and that is like I think kind of a corrective, preventative action. If you tight, if you strengthen those other muscles, it's going to prevent you from getting injured. So um, this is kind of a big thing with me. I'm 51 years old, and like a lot of people, are like, well, how do you stay in the game? And I'm like, and how come you haven't written a book? And I'm like, oh god, um, I know that everyone's got a book. It's all about the book. Yeah, marketing. yeah. Um, right now, I'm writing a book on my hundred ascents of the nose. Which congratulations! Uh, that was fun to watch. Yeah, um, that's. And, and now is that the same? Way? Is this one you're writing, or is this the one uh, being written about you? The, the lifelong obsession with the nose. Lifelong obsession with the nose. Hundred ascents is a co-authorship with Jamie okay. Moya. She's a a uh, journalist that's won just gazillions of awards, so I'm totally lucky to have her as a co-author. Um, and alluding to this other thing, I've been actually writing a book of how to how to train for a life of climbing, as opposed to how to train for climbing. Yeah. Um, it's kind of like how to stay in the game for life, you know, how to keep yourself interested and not get so injured that, because I say so injured because everyone's going to get injured. It's the only way you can kind of push the limit, learn, and then step back and re recover and go again. Mm -hmm. um, there's very few exceptions. I hear Jim Donini, um, he's now 71, has like purportedly never had a bad injury. He's been climbing for, I don't know, a hundred years or something. Um, There's always going to be those people. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, but that's kind of my secret is that I try to, I am not really a, a huge cross trainer, but I do dabble and do a little CrossFit and just do it just enough and almost get injured and then back away. And then I'll, I'll do yoga. Um, Couple times a month, and then I'll I'll not do it for a couple. Months. Then I'll do TRX and I'll do cycling. Um, so I dabble in a little bit of each thing and try to get my muscles sore in a different way. That's great, and, and I think we all realize now that nutrition actually does matter. So um, <laughs> how do you feel yourself when you're, you know, either training, but certainly like when you're out there on the climbs? Well, how do I fuel? I I mean I'm lucky, and I'll. And this is where, like, I think that I'm an average athlete. It's just that I found something I love, so I persist at it in the climbing. So physicality, I'm average, but I just pushed, and, like, everyone goes, oh, no, Hans, you've accomplished these great things. And I'm like, well, you know, I busted my butt lots of climbing hours. But nutrition, I will give you. I'm gifted in my DNA. I can eat anything, <laughs> and it will fuel me. I mean, whether it's waffles or hamburgers or, or an energy bar, you know. Um, and... By and large, the last 20 years, in my opinion, um, you know, energy bars started off with power bar, cliff bar, and it was sugar and carbos, and I do awesome on just sugar and carbos. Um, so that's, I haven't had to change from that. And, you know, I found about in my 40s that I started cramping up, which never happened to me before, and it's so simple. I mean, I have Noon as a sponsor, so I put that out there. Noon is a electrolyte drink tablet, but, you know, to everyone's advantage, I'll say that a Tums tablet, chew some Tums tablet, and it's got calcium, magnesium, and awesome electrolytes in it, and it costs one-tenth as much as Gatorade or Cytomax or any of these expensive um, drinks, but they don't taste near as good as a noon. No, that's good. That's yeah. new advice. I've never heard that. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, I learned it from cyclists. Apparently, their legs will cramp up. They'll pull off the side, chew down two or three or four or five Tums. A few minutes later, their legs aren't cramped. Bang, they go. And their stomachs feel great. Yeah. And for me, it's my forearms, right? Because right. you're climbing up El Cap and like you just can't hold on to the jugs anymore and like, uh, what do I do? Um, thank goodness I learned that after a couple times that happening to me. So. Awesome. Well, now as you're moving quickly towards 200 ascents, yeah. do you see any speed ascents in there or is it really now just about in, enjoying and coming up with unique ways to reascend the nose? Well, we have this cliche in our sport too of the low hanging fruit, you know, and there's these things like we make up a male female fastest team or a husband and wife fastest team or father son fastest team or person from Colorado, California. So there's lots of there's lots of first um, in a day ascents on El Cap, and by that you know there's grade six and grade seven routes on El Cap where a normal party will take three days, and those still haven't been done in a single push or in a day. And that IAD in a day is like the four minute mile. You know, has that route been done sure. in a day? So there's a couple of those left to do. No, that's uh, you know in the future that'll be my big goal. I've done El Cap once. I was very when I got to the top with Steve Schneider, he said that between the two of us, we had 109 ascents of El Cap. Nice. I had one and he had 108. 
It's good to go with experience, yeah. Yeah, you know, the funny thing is, is I almost don't feel like I did. I need to go back and do it with a partner of my own strength to feel like I actually accomplished it because there was no doubt in my mind that with him as my partner that we yeah. weren't going to make it. I, I get that all the time. People go, well, I don't really want to climb the nose with you, Hans. That's cheating. And I'm like, well, you know, if you've only got a weekend, you got, got to go with what you got to do. So. Well, that was mine. It was my 35th birthday. I was like, I want to summon on my birthday. Oh, nice. Color high water. Yeah. You know. So now it's like this year I've got a mountaineering project. You know, maybe in five years it's going to be training for nose in a day. Yeah. That'll be the next big one. Well, I'm pretty unoriginal. I've gone up El Cap, I think, because uh, I'm tallying all this for my book. Yeah. I think I've gone up El Cap like 21 times with Steve Schneider. So. Um, he's a good partner to go with. I, I, had, I, had a, I had a great time. So, and, and it was because of you. You, you, you handed him over. Cool. So, um, one last thing, just which is, uh, here we are. We're at outdoor research. Yeah. You're not. You're an OR athlete. Yeah. What, what, you know, what other gear do you love and why? Um, again, I try not to be like, oh, you know, all outdoor research. But like, there is just some totally cool tech fabrics. We talk about, you know gear and clothing advancements in the last 30 years. Uh, Jeannie Wall, who is their kind of source buyer, she is amazing at finding just w crazy cool new technology fabric and she'll slip it in under an armpit or uh, she'll add a, a cool thumb catch to have, I call it hobo mitts on your thing or, or some other things. She's super genius at finding ways to add new technology to the clothing we have. And, Granted, you'll see it in North Face and Columbia wow. and all these others, but each of them are playing off and go, oh, now, and there's finding ways to use cool fabric, whether it's for breathability or flexibility or waterproofness, and you know, just silly things like, oh, well, let's just put the waterproof on the shoulders, right? Right. And not down below. Like, wow, that's amazing. Let's do that. And now you're out there huffing away on some adventure and like your gear is working perfectly. And some people, I think, take it for granted that like, oh, you know, I feel, the right temperature below and I'm not getting wet and you know they don't realize all the decades of, sure. of innovation we've done kind of designing these little different things you know so really cool and I can't help but you know mention like it's not just the gear it's it's the gear in filming because we're about a film festival like I remember take my dad taking a huge VHS recorder to the base of El Cap I mean like on his shoulder like and filming oh, yeah. with a home video <laughs> camera me and Steve Schneider in 1991 sure. right and like here's this huge VHS tape and like he's oh I gotta change it out you know and I gotta slip a battery on that weighs as much as a camera does now right or yeah, like yeah. More. like five times the weight of a GoPro right which is a complete unit right and yeah. can record ten times as much and, 10 times the quality, right? So I, this is what's super cool, I think, is that all these people here doing these crazy adventures, now we can take the POV with them just about, well, anywhere. They can take it anywhere. So, well, and you've got the, the, the selfie follow me drones. And, oh, yeah. You know, I mean, now they've got the, the nano drones that are starting to pop up that you can control from your smartphone. And, yeah. I mean, it's just the world's changing, like, in terms of what's possible yeah. with, you know, filming technology, yeah. which brings us back to, obviously, you're very versed in media. Yeah. When I called up, what was it about the Mountain Adventure Film Festival that you said, yeah, this is a great idea? Well, your film festival online means that, like, I don't have to be in a place at a certain time, a certain date, you know, and that means I can go on my adventures and I can go watch the films that other people do and whenever I want. I mean, it's brilliant, right? I mean, there's going to be your armchair watchers who can go to a festival at a certain time, date, and I can too sometimes, but... Like, I want to be inspired by these people doing these other adventures. And um, if I can do it when I'm on a plane ride somewhere or, you know, download it on my computer or when I'm at an airport or, or at a hotel or something, um, I'm totally psyched. And that's going to keep me out there adventuring and hopefully a lot more people because they can get inspired by this stuff. Yeah. Well, speaking of that, I hope that this and all the films inspire you to go out there and have an adventure of your own. And then be sure to share it on Facebook. Yeah, and say hi <laughs> if you pass me on El Cap.